Well, good morning, everybody. Here I am standing outside in the freezing cold behind me here. No, it's a uh, it's one of those fake backgrounds that I can use on a Zoom, and so we're uh, we're live here, January second, twenty twenty two. How in the world uh, did we get here? And uh, let's see, Friday. Um, those of you who didn't see, I was running errands with the convertible top down and grilling outside with my shorts on, and here we are. Minus 15 degree wind chill and all kinds of stuff going on. But uh, you know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, and I know some churches have canceled like we did and some other churches have decided to go on. Uh, we're just going to do the best we can. And I'm, I'm glad that you are joining us today. So let's pray as we begin the new year here on live stream Facebook. Father, we thank you. For this day, this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We ask Almighty God that you administer to those that are watching, those that are going to be watching live, those that are going to be watching uh, after the live stream is completed. Father God, we pray for your direction and guidance today in Jesus' name. Minister to us by your Holy Spirit. We pray, uh, God, that uh, 2022 uh, would be uh, the year of revival, the year of spiritual renewal the year of spiritual refreshing, the year of spiritual focus. And we give you the praise and the glory for it. Minister to those uh, who are in need of a spiritual touch, a uh, mental touch, a physical touch, a financial touch, a, a marital touch, a, a family touch, God, by your anointing, by your spirit, by the presence, by the power of God. And we give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, it's so good to have you. Uh, join with us here on uh, Facebook Live. This is not the way that I wanted to start the year off, and I'm sure it's not the way that you wanted to start the year off, but uh, we improvise, we adapt, we overcome, as Gunny Sergeant Highway said, and so we're just uh, going to move on and do the best we can. Uh, we are having Wednesday night Bible study this Wednesday night, fellowship at 630, and Bible study at 7 o'clock. Uh, we will just, uh, you know, winter has finally uh, hit, and hopefully it moderates some, and uh, we can get back uh, to inside services, and we will keep an eye on the weather and keep you informed as to where uh, we are going to go and what we're going to do. So uh, if you're watching live, uh, say hello uh, in the comment section. I've got my wife, my lovely, beautiful wife, Roxy. She's going to be... Uh, talking with you back and forth, and I'm sure there will be others. I just want this to be a uh, good day in the Lord, a day of just rejoicing and a day of starting the year off right. You know what? doesn't matter whether uh, uh, whether we're in church or doing live stream. The church is still the church, and the church needs to be the church, and all of God's people said amen. All right. So uh, in the Bible, I was just thinking about this, Psalms 90. And verse 12 says, teach us, O Lord, uh, to number to number our days. And uh, as we look back uh, 2020 and 2021, uh, and we can even look back further than that, <clears throat> and as, uh, <clears throat> as we grow older, uh, we, we notice that uh, our days are getting shorter, uh, winters are getting colder, summers are getting hotter. And uh, we know that uh, we are heading for that inevitable day. But you know what? Uh, all of us are heading there. Uh, some of us are getting there faster than others. But I believe God still has a purpose and a plan uh, for our life. And so uh, you're about to hear uh, in the background my heater kick on. So we're trying to keep warm here as well as you. Uh, so teach us, Lord, to number our days. And uh, I was reminded of that movie Bucket List, The Bucket List. <clears throat> excuse me, with um, Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, two guys uh, from completely different sides of the track uh, somehow by fate meet each other in the same hospital room with terminal disease, and they, uh, they make a bucket list out of things that they want to do and places they want to go see and 
And uh, it, it just takes all kinds of twists and turns, and it's a real interesting movie. So I was I was writing down things that um, I've done and places that I've gone and places that uh, my wife has gone and things that we've done together and things that we've done separately. So I'd just like to read some of them. And, hey, uh, if you're following along and, and you have a special place or special places that you've been or special things, that you've got to do, type them in the comment section. Let's let's just have a little bit of fun with this, and then we'll get to the spiritual side here in a minute. Thank you, baby. My wife just brought me in a nice cup of water. Ah, good water. All right. So um, I've been to Colorado. My wife and I have both been to Colorado. We've been to Colorado uh, several times. Um, I've been to uh, up to the top of Pikes Peak. Went to uh, Cave of the Winds, um, the um, Garden of the Gods. That's where the, uh, all them big boulders are. Uh, Estes Park uh, in the springtime where it was still snow and a lot of snow. Uh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was fun. Been to Fort Collins. Um, been to uh, Omaha, the Omaha Zoo. And that was one of the uh, better zoos that I've been to, and I've been to uh, several. Um, let's see, anybody here watching been to Branson, Missouri? You know, I've been to Branson, Missouri, uh, and um, back after dad passed away, we all got together for Christmas in Branson, and my daughter Jenna um, uh, did all the planning, and she got us into a limo, and we got to cruise uh, Branson and Christmas lights in a limousine. That was a blast. Um, I've also been stuck in Branson. Anybody here been stuck in Branson? Uh, my wife, Roxy, and I went out there, I, I believe it was for our second honeymoon, and we were driving a little Dodge Omni with a manual five-speed transmission, and the clutch went out. And you don't want to be on the strip with the clutch out. So my brother Dave and my stepbrother Mike, uh, I called them to, hey, help us out they brought the uh, old green international scout and they put us on a tow rope and i kid you not that tow ro rope was probably five or ten feet long at the best and we were going up and down and out and in and uh, here and there and changing lanes 60 70 miles an hour that was uh you know back then we didn't wear uh <clears throat> seat belts but we wore seat my wife and i wore seat belts that day and thank God we got home safely. So don't ever get stuck in Branson, whatever you do. Uh, we've been to, Roxy and I have been to the California coast, uh, and we've actually stayed overnight in the Redwood Forest. And that was quite the experience, very quiet. And to see uh, the Redwood uh, trees, just an awesome sight. I mean, those things are just super tall, and it's, it's incredible, some of the stories behind that. Uh, we've been to Florida. Uh, took uh, my wife uh, and our kids to Florida, and uh, instead of instead of renting a, a motel, uh, we got a house, a three bedroom, two bathroom, and a uh, outdoor pool with a lanai that's a screen in uh, around it on a golf course uh, for cheaper than a motel. And we went to uh, Disneyland and we went to Universal Studios. Uh, then we got to go saltwater fishing and I caught a shark. That thing was like 40, 50 feet long, about 25. To, well, it was, no, it, was, it was only about that big, but Hey, that was a, that was a blast. That was a lot of fun. I also went down to Florida, Tampa Bay and on a different occasion and went to the 50th, uh, running of the Daytona 500. And that was very interesting. Very fun. Uh, my wife and I have been to Cape Cod. Uh, we've been to Martha's Vineyard, went up to Plymouth Rock. Um, then we went to New York, uh, went round and round and round in circles and we saw the Statue of Liberty and the, and the funny thing is about the Statue of Liberty is we actually saw the back of the Statue of Liberty because we couldn't see the front of it, but hey, we saw the Statue of Liberty nonetheless. I think we were on the New Jersey side. We went to Washington, D.C. and uh, Washington, D.C. was a was, uh, uh, a place that I encourage everybody to go to at least once to see the hit historical. We went to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, uh, saw the changing of the guard. Uh, we went to several locations, went uh, through the cemetery. It was, uh, it was a very interesting time. Been to Baltimore, 
uh, went to Fort Henry, uh, been in the uh, 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 Inner Harbor. Uh, we got to eat uh, blue crab. I don't know if any of you have had, ever had the blue crab in the Baltimore area, but uh, they bring it out and just uh, uh, like on a, they just throw it on like a newspaper, a sheet of paper, and you got a hammer, also known as a mallet, and uh, it's covered uh, with Old Bay seasoning. And so we were pounding. Uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy because you spend about 10 minutes uh, pounding and separating the shells from the blue crab and get about three bites. By the time you're done all of that eating, you burn more calories than you've taken in. And so you have to go to a fast food restaurant just to get nourishment. But what was really funny is uh, my son, Jacob, he was covered from Old Bay to the top of his head, to the sole of his feet. And we had to hose him down afterward. That was uh, pretty, uh, pretty fun. Uh, went to Charleston, South Carolina. <clears throat> Excuse me. Went to Savannah, Georgia. Um, I went to uh, a lot of historical places down there, including one of the very few remaining plantations. And that was a lot of fun. That was a very, very historical. Um, Let's see, uh, I, I've been to Mount Rushmore, went there with mom and dad, went to the uh, site of the Little Bighorn Battle with uh, General Custer. Um, we've been, uh, my family has been to the Grand Canyon several times, uh, been to Appomattox. Uh, that's where the, uh, uh, the surrender for the Civil War was signed, been there. Uh, my wife, Roxy, has been to uh, Hawaii and she's been to Times Square uh, in the uh, uh, in New York City, uh, we've been to the World Trade Centers and uh, at the Empire State Building. I'm just kind of looking through here, seeing if uh, we've been to the Alamo uh, down in Texas, and then uh, we went to New Braunfels, Texas, where the original Schlitterbahn was, and we got to play there. And then they were at that time they were building the Kansas City, and of course we all know the events there, and and it's been since closed down. Um, uh, we've been to Vegas, uh, just a lot of places. I've been to Cabo San Lucas uh, uh, to uh, take a vacation. Very nice, very relaxing. And I've been into Mexico on numerous occasions um, for uh, pleasure and for uh, missionary work. So, you know, there's just uh, 2022. I don't know what 2022 is going to bring us. But, uh, you know, if you have a bucket list to do, um, hey, Go do them. But here's the thing that the, the spiritual uh, principle that I wanted to bring into this, and this is found in, let me get, uh, make sure I get the scripture correct, Mark chapter 8 and verse 36. And Jesus says, What doth it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And so, uh, you know, there are, there's a lot of fun places to go, a lot of interesting things to do. I know uh, several uh, in our church have traveled to the Noah's Ark and the Creation Museum and and had a good time there and traveled other places and folks those are great things to do uh and you know it's it's very good uh god um told us actually commanded us to take times of rest okay take times of rest so uh, vacation and times of rest are absolutely important but here's the thing that i i, I want to just kind of hit uh very briefly uh this morning and uh and that is, do you have a spiritual bucket list? A spiritual bucket list. Um, that's the things that you feel that you need to do spiritually this year. Uh, things that you would like to accomplish in your own personal life this year. Um, things that you'd like to see Revival Center Church do and get accomplished this year. And um, as, as we all have not watched uh, over the last few years, um, the end times are upon us as we are sprinting toward uh, a one world government, a one world religion, a one world monetary system, uh, and all the absolute kookiness and craziness and everything that's going on. Uh, and so uh, I would encourage each and every one of you that are, uh, that are attending whatever church you're attending, get a spiritual bucket list for this year um, because time is upon us, uh, you know, and <laughs> I, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best not to make a mistake and say in 2022 is going to be the best year ever. I'm going to try to refrain from saying that, but I would like for 2022 for Revival Center Church, uh, just kind of casting my vision. Look, I, I, look, listen, um, last two years, we've had a lot of things happen. Uh, a lot of them were good. We've had a lot of things happen that were bad. A lot of things that didn't get done that should have gotten done. I get that. Um, but I, I would, my goal, and I hope that you would join me in setting this goal, this bucket list for 2022. And that is to make 2022 the most spiritually productive year ever at Community Revival Center Church. And uh, I'd like to talk uh, about that next Sunday. Now, we're not going to do a live stream next Sunday. We're going we're gonna to meet together in a casual setting, and we're going to have uh, some good old sit-down conversations uh, with, uh, with the congregation and just set the tone, set the direction, and uh, set a new start and get a goal, get uh, a bucket list set forth for 2022. We've already got some things that are brewing spiritually that are good. Uh, but, you know, I, I will tell you, and you know as well as I do, uh, anytime that um, we have tried to move forward, Satan has come in with an onslaught of attack. And I've talked, I have talked to a lot of pastors uh, that, uh, you know, and they weren't making a negative confession. They were just stating the facts that 2021, uh, they thought 2020 was bad, but 2021 was the year of the absolute most vicious, vile, uh, satanic, demonic attacks upon the church and on God's people they have ever seen. And I agree with them. Uh, I mean, we've had, uh, you know, physical, uh, we've had spiritual, we've had mental attacks, financial attacks, um, attacks in marriages, attacks in families. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, I know that, uh, some of us have, have reached the absolute point of, uh, complete exasperation, desperation. God, God, how long? You know, where, where's the intervention here? Where's the intercession? I believe God uh, uh, wants us to continue. But, uh, you know, there, there's that old saying, and it's been said many times, it's been preached about many times. And that is, um, if you do the same thing the same way and expect the same results, you're going, you're living in insanity. And I believe that is true. Uh, and so we, I need to make change. We need to make change, uh, and, and begin to accomplish, begin to become spiritually productive this year. Um, and of course, you know, uh, I, I know I'm going to be captain obvious here for all of us, but, uh, spiritual productivity starts with self, with self. And so, uh, begin to work on your own spiritual productivity for this year uh if you haven't read the bible start reading the bible don't don't get yourself into a situation where you read uh where you just go in cold turkey and and start reading 25 chapters and then get burned out uh you know we're in a long distance race here start slow uh same thing with prayer uh, uh you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, start doing the things the basic fundamentals start setting the foundation, start setting uh, the tone uh, for 2022, start setting that tone early and continue to set it, consistently being consistent. Um, and, and God wants us to move in that direction. So uh, begin your own spiritual bucket list uh, personally, and then your uh, spiritual bucket list for the church and uh, what, what you want to see accomplished and how you want to be involved with those things being accomplished. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I, I you know, I, I feel the urgency once again in 2022, and I know we've been, uh, sideways. We've been sidetracked. We've had, uh, obstacles. We've had obstructions. Uh, we've had detours and it just seems like it's been one thing after another, after another, or as I say, if it ain't one thing, it's six others, but, uh, God is still faithful and God still has a destiny. God still has a purpose. God still has a plan. God still has a mission. God still has a vision, not only for you personally, 
but for us corporately. So I want to encourage you, uh, 2022, um, li listen. Let me see if I can say this correctly. 2022 isn't going to be any different than last year or the year before that or the year before that unless we make the changes necessary to make to make it different okay and that's what uh, uh that's what uh we plan to do in 2022 and that is to make the changes necessary to make the days the weeks the months uh and the year 2022 different again i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fall into the sand trap of uh, the 2022 gonna be the best year ever uh no uh i'm just gonna say for me personally and for the church somehow some way let's make 2022 different than the previous years in a better way in a more productive way spiritually mentally physically financially maritally and family looking uh, the, uh you know looking uh ahead and forgetting those things in the past uh like i said what should have been done what didn't get done what should have been said what didn't get said uh what was said wrong what was done wrong Let's move on uh, and, and just set forth a tone in 2022 that this is it. We're going to make this year uh, our year for God. Amen. I love you and I appreciate you joining us together on uh, Facebook Live. And uh, we're going to get back, uh, hopefully. And uh, like I said, we'll keep an eye on the weather. Don't know what this weather pattern is going to do, but um, hopefully we will. Um, get in uh, side <laughs> where it's warm. Amen. So pray with me today. Father, I thank you for uh, you, God, being a faithful God. And I thank you, for God, for good, great uh, people, people of the Most High God, people uh, at Community Revival Center Church uh, that have stuck it out through thick and thicker and thickest. Uh, Father God, we just pray that you would help us recenter refocus 2022 uh to make it a productive year spiritually god to stop doing the same thing the same way to start making personal changes in our spiritual life so that we can make corporate changes in the church corporately spiritually and father we thank you for it i pray that you would uh, minister to those uh, that are watching uh, that you would keep your hand of protection upon them keep them safe from the harm keep them from all evil bless them today. Father God, help us to set the tone for 2022 to being productive in the spiritual realm, because that's what's important. God, that's what's important. We're not going to stand before God, and he's not going to ask us, where are all the places you've been to? What are all the things that you've done? Uh, you know, what was your favorite vacation? God's not going to ask those things, and I pray, God Almighty, that you would help us to focus on the right things to do. At the same time, taking rest when we need it, but God help us in Jesus' name to be supernaturally refreshed, renewed, rejuvenated, and re-energized by the Spirit of Almighty God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, appreciate you, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And the Lord give thee peace. I pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. Take care.